It's Monday night, and it's time for voiceover body shop. <laughs> Finally, another week just rolled by. Rolled, <laughs> rocketed by is more like it. Depends on what you were doing, <laughs> I suppose. Anyway, great show tonight, as always. Uh, we've got a, a, a wonderful guest who has something we haven't really talked about a whole lot. We talk about social media. Uh, Tracy Lindley is going to be here, and she's going to talk to us about how to market better on LinkedIn. Pay attention, folks. Absolutely. And we have some cool tech stuff. Yeah, I'll come up with something. Uh, <laughs> well, we had a couple of interesting questions this morning. We do, we do, actually. We're, we're, we have... And some show and tell. And some show and tell. So, stay tuned. Voice Over Body Shop coming right up right now. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers. With a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars. A Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. A voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording. And a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2GoGo.com, Everything you need to become a successful voice artist. Voice Over Extra, your daily resource for VO success. The VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by voiceactorwebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, Live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. All righty. Okay. Well... Another Monday night comes by, and we're here to help the voiceover world make their lives easier. We're the machete in the hedge of technology. Really? Or the bush of technology, okay. or whatever you call it. We, we're going to cut the, through it. The hedge, yeah. Okay. The, <laughs> the hedge machete girl. in the hedge. The machete in the hedge you, of voiceover you technology. see somebody with a machete in your hedges, better call 911. Yes. Boy, this thing makes me look my age. This, <laughs> this is bad it's coming in very white <laughs> some people find it very distinguishing and i've even heard the word s-e-x-y used to describe your beard so. okay well <laughs> <laughs> anyway now a little in a little play wednesday night and then thursday morning on a plane and all of us are going to atlanta are you going to shave it before you go to Atlanta? No, I'm going to keep it for the... Every, nice. Everybody's, I got to see your beard, man. Yeah. Okay, I so, like that. Uh, then, But then when you come back, you're not allowed back in the house. Apparently until not. Until you shave it. No. Right. Um, um, then again, I I'll, <laughs> everybody needs to lobby for it. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, Tracy Lindley's on the show tonight. We're going to talk about uh, marketing on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. which she's really good at. And uh, apparently she has many disciples who are also very good at it. And they're all watching tonight. So they should be I'm glad to have you with us. And we're going to find out how good she actually is at this LinkedIn oh, stuff. I've, still how many I've seen her do show. this presentation. Yeah. <laughs> She's top, top notch with awesome. that. Uh, and, uh, we have a little bit of technology to talk about. Mm -hmm. We've got some interesting questions this morning and, uh, you've been working on some cool stuff. So we'll get to that, that in just a couple of minutes, yeah. but right now it's time for. Voice of a body shop presents the VOBS. Voice over extra news. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. Networking without nagging. Say, is the entire voiceover world descending on Atlanta this week for the Biggie Annual VO Atlanta Conference? 
Well, more than 600 registrants from over 40 U.S. states and 15 countries, wow, are currently logged on the conference website. And attendees are booking into Overflow Hotels starting Thursday night. The event promises over 200 hours of learning, and you have to be there for each and every hour. Plus, lots of networking, which brings up tonight's topic. How do you network with other voice actors and coaches without becoming a bore or a nag? The quick answer is to make the conversation about other people, not you. You're at the conference to start and continue relationships, yet there's more to it, as our buddy Dave Cavassier writes in an article now at voiceoverextra.com. Humility is a powerful tool, Dave advises, and applied to your conference experience, remember this, everyone likes to talk about themselves. So when you take the time to seem interested and listen to their story, you make a good impression. And Dave suggests this, after the hello, ask what's the latest in their world. For instance... How are the kids slash husband slash wife slash dog slash cat slash parents? How was their trip to Atlanta? <laughs> What's their latest success story? Are they having a good time at the conference? What are they hoping to learn? Who have they seen so far? Mm. Then if the other person manages to get in on one of those questions to elicit a response from you, make sure your answer is short and move on to the next question for them on the list. Remember their name and use it when talking to them. Ask them for a business card and give them yours. Make sure it's okay for you to email or call as a follow-up to the conference. Remember, Dave says you're there to learn and to meet people. Networking. So don't muddy the waters with a lot of gobbledygook about yourself. Mm. Okay, maybe a little bit about yourself. So we look forward to seeing you at the conference. And now you know what to say to Dave when you meet him there. This article and hundreds more await you now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Right. Man, it's going to be a madhouse there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. everybody's going to be there. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't have to do a presentation, so I'm just going to schmooze. Me neither. I don't have to do a presentation either. I'm actually being brought in by Source Elements. Ah. Um, I'll be running the, if you have to cut a VO track while you're at the conference, oh. or you have to do an ISDN. Oh, we're going to have uh, Source Elements will have V-I-S-D-N there at the conference. Oh, so excellent. You'll be able to come down. I'll be in a, some room off down a hall by myself and <laughs> sitting in there hanging out and recording people, answering questions about Source Connect and, well, just answering questions about anything. Right. And and actually, Dave and Dave Cavassi are going to be there together to help promote World Voices organization. So. Talk to us about Wovo if you got a question about it. And right. uh, and if you're a newbie and you want to join, we'll tell you how to do it. And we'll tell you all the cool stuff that we do. Yeah. Anyway, what's up in tech this week? Well, I was looking for something interesting, and I just stumbled on the fact that Mac Sales, which is a fantastic place for getting anything Apple-related, hard drives, accessories, mm -hmm. you know, things. Um, they've started, and maybe they've done this for a while, but it's just really landed on my, uh, just hit me. That they're also a resource for buying used Macs. And I'm not, I know a lot of folks think of the Apple tax when it comes to buying an Apple. They consider Apple computers to be a lot more expensive, dollar per, you know, pound for pound than a Windows computer. There, I have found that when you really break it down and look at what you're getting, components and everything else, it's not the divide you think it is. And if you look for something refurbished or used, it's, it's actually, uh, equalizes it a lot more and and a used mac holds its value because well they're pretty reliable computers they're they like hondas the, yeah they have a lot they have some pretty good longevity mm -hmm. i mean apple would love it if you bought a new one every three years clearly um, but you know five six seven years or more is pretty common with a mac and if you go on MacSales.com, you can find a pretty wide range of them um used um, they've got Mac Pros, MacBook Airs, Mac Airs, things like that. I'm a big fan of buying stuff refurbished or or used. I, I I believe that every single Apple computer I've ever purchased has been from either the Apple retailers refurbished section, mm -hmm. which if you don't know about that, is a good resource. It's not very clear on the website, but right. if you scroll to the very bottom, you'll look you'll see a refurbished section. Right. How much can you save doing that? I mean, it's usually like anywhere from 15 to 20%, which, mm -hmm. you know, 
this is technically not a brand new Mac. It's technically left the factory and had to come back for some reason. Right. But I think it's actually an advantage because by that point, the computer's gone through a whole secondary check over right. and review and refresh, repair, whatever it's needed. And then it gets a new one year warranty, just like any other Mac. And you pay 20% you know, less for it. I, I think it's a no brainer. I, I'm a big fan of getting things from the refurbished place. But if even if the refurbished selection at Apple is too limited, because it's var- it varies dramatically depending on what's going on. Um, go check out Mac Sales. They have refurbished computers and their iMac refurbished machines. I mean, you can get one that's a lot older that will still run Twisted Wave, mm-hmm. work beautifully with a 2i2. For example, they have a 20-inch Core 2 Duo, okay, not fast by today's standards, but if you really want to get into using a Mac for recording because you want to use Twisted Wave, 279 bucks for a computer with four gigs of RAM, a 640 gig hard drive, an actual optical drive, which by the way, no (laughs) Apple computer today comes with an optical drive. It doesn't come with anything. It comes with little holes in the side. Yeah. So you're getting, it's got an optical drive. Yes, it is old. Yes, but it is a working fully uh refurbished in perfect working condition mac so check it out there's some really killer deals in fact i see it sold out that's how popular those wow. are and forget about the, it the next one up from that getting a lot more modern is a core quad core i5 machine mm. so it's a lot more modern that's a uh 2011 mac i use a 2011 mac you use a 2011 we both we all have 2011 mac minis that are great little machines and you can get one of those for 469 wow so you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a big proponent of Apple computers. It doesn't mean I like everything that Apple does. I don't like that the garden walls of the Apple ecosystem seem to get taller and taller and taller. Uh, you know, it, but it, for reliability and you know, for reliability, you turn it on and it works. Support. Yeah. And the thing about a Mac is the OS mm-hmm. and the hardware were developed together. They're they're guaranteed to work together. Right. You know, it, it removes some massive variables. You right. know, when you go Windows, don't, I won't even talk about home built machines. That's a total. Let me nightmare. put this card in there. Yeah. I mean, you can build. Oh, here's things, a great graphics card. Yeah. You better like supporting your own computers. If you want to, mm. if you don't want to have to be worrying about that, Apple's a good way to go. And here's a way to get one for a pretty good price. Xsales.com. Yeah. Mm. By the way, you know, did you notice that we're actually. You know, we're not, we're going to come out of here eventually, but this is the closet of Jack DeGolia. Uh, you know, we wanted you to send in pictures of your booths, show us your booths. Mm-hmm. And Jack did that. You can too. Doesn't it look cool? We're in Jack's closet. <laughs> I was hoping we'd get a closet booth. Uh, there, I thought maybe, that would uh, look really fun. And, and as you can see, and, w- and what's, what's Jack wearing these days? <laughs> he's got, uh, shirts and pants, and then he's got some sweaters over here. But yeah. anyway, but Great job, Jack, because I know his studio sounds great, because clothes are the best diffusers and absorbers out there. They really are. They really, really are. And he's got, a, I think, a producer's choice curtain up here, too, that he pulls behind him. Mm. So who knows what goes on behind the curtain, but just don't pay any attention to the man there. (laughs) All righty. Well, we've got more to come up. We've got some tech questions we want to deal with, and we'll get to that right after these important messages. This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.com. Man, there's one show that I can't miss. It's called V-O-B-S. And a lot of people are like, V-O-B-S? What is that? That is BS about V-O. And I love V-O. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow. Ah! Snails like it, too. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> Learn the latest in voiceover technology, business, and good old fashioned acting. Hey, listen up. Will 2018 be the year to take your voiceover practice to the next level? If not, you can go back to checking your email or see what's on LinkedIn or whatever while this message is airing. But if you're serious about dramatically upping your level of success, 
Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to a very, very, very special URL. That's something you type in to make sure that you are going to a website. And that is VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO2gogo.com forward slash VOBS. Take your, take your business to the next level on uh, VO to gogo.com forward slash VOBS. It'll give you a significant savings. So uh, that is David H. Lawrence and his great stuff. Join the hundreds of VO practitioners around the world who have decided to do something positive and invest in themselves for this new year. Learn voiceover from the ground up or from wherever you are to wherever you want to be. VO2gogo.com forward slash VOBS. Let's make 2018 your year. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, Go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back! Don't want to get caught like deer in the headlights, but anyway. So, uh, things are interesting in our business. It's not a, it's not an easy business. I mean, you got to learn the business, you got to learn the networking. We're going to talk about that tonight. Mm -hmm. But your home voiceover studio is a really important part, and so many people just don't get it. They're intimidated by it. It seems confusing. It's high tech. And in reality, it's not. And you don't want tech support by committee. No, we're, we're going to talk, talk about, about in a second. <laughs> but if you really need help learning how to build a home studio, well, one, watching this show, certainly, if you've been watching for the last seven years, seven years in March, believe it or not, <laughs> if you've been watching, you know that what George and I do is help you with your home voiceover studios. And if you need help from the voice engineer to the stars, they go to, uh, George, the tech.com. Uh, that's where all my tech stuff is. You can schedule things there. You can order services, get your studio built. Uh, you know, it's all right there. It's a, a huge menu. It's like a Chinese menu. It's a pretty, it do. is kind of like a Greek <laughs> restaurant menu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't find a good Greek restaurant. A Greek here diner. Now. I mean, Greek diner, Greek diner. Greek diner yeah. 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 How many pages of cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Okay. Uh, and, and what about you, Dan? Well, Where if, find if you? Yeah, you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just click in there and see what I do. And if you want to send me uh, a sample of your audio, raw, dry, uh, I want to hear what your booth sounds like. You just click on the specimen collection cup there and that opens a Dropbox and you can send it right to me and I will listen to it. Mm -hmm. I may not write back, but I will listen to it. No, I'll write back. I do that all the time. Well, anyway, this morning you and I were involved in this thread on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked this question about, they were saying, I'm getting feedback in my monitors. Right. Turn on the mic. The monitors start to squeal and make like a foghorn. I mean, and, and, and she's like, what do I do? Well, people started chiming in on this, on this, uh, this thread. And they're like, turn off your phantom power, unplug your microphone, which, you know, these are makes not, it really tough these to These are not record. necessarily wrong answers. Well, if you're trying to record, they are. They're just <laughs> not the right answer. No, no. <laughs> uh, there were some other very creative ones and some, some people were going into great detail. And finally, uh, so if you can get that picture of the two I two up behind me here, cause she was talking about a Scarlet two I two, um, there it is right there. All she had to do was touch this little switch here like that, that says direct monitor. 
and that turns off your monitors when your mic's open. You know, and, and there's all these long things in there. There's a lot of information. And I'm like, turn off direct monitor. Yeah. And then conversation just, oh. All, all of a sudden, all these little <laughs> likes popped up. Yeah, I like that answer. I like that answer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the lesson there, I mean, it's, trust me, I've gotten a lot of support from groups and forums and news, all that stuff. Right. I've used those, all those things as resources over the years. The thing is, is like, that's, what's going to happen. You're going to get into a, you, you can get a, a phalanx of answers. Good one word. of them might be the right one. And in that case, yours was the right one, but. How, in the end, how did she know that was the right one? Unless she actually, hopefully, tried so it. Tried it. Went, oh, yeah. And then it, it started to work right. Direct so. monitoring can get people in trouble too. Twisted Wave has a monitoring function mm -hmm. built in as well, and that it does a similar thing. Right. And it gets people in trouble. Right. Yeah. Because you, I mean, there's it's always an argument whether you want to be monitoring yourself while you're recording. Mm -hmm. Some people do. Some people don't. The idea of wearing headphones is so you can hear something else other than yourself. Right. Because if you're listening to yourself, chances are you're not paying full attention to that black and white stuff that's on the paper. I know. Any, anything that's feeding into your ears is, is subliminally on some level a distraction to yeah. you. Yeah. So know, that's you out of not it. a good idea. So the, go ahead. Yeah. The Scarlet, just a little more about the Scarlet. Yeah. Um, it's a great simple interface. I like that it has an on off switch for monitoring. Many others have a knob. Where you blend from Mix, playback to yeah, record, right? Yeah, and I think people that's a little esoteric and funk and weird. For what we need, it's either on or off. I mm -hmm. do like that. I wish that that monitor switch would only affect what comes out of the speakers mm -hmm. or the headphones, or, or if you had control over the two independently, right? Because it'd be nice to set it up so that the microphone never comes out of the monitors, right? Right? Then you wouldn't ever have feedback. Wouldn't that be cool? It would be. You know that would. That's something that your little AG03 does have. It has a monitor mute button. Right. And that, I like that you can mute the monitors and, and keep the headphones on. At least, it's, I believe that's how it, it works, No, right? it, it works great. Yeah. It's yeah. really... And, I, and I've used it on sessions in here where someone's in the booth and I just go, let's listen to them. Don't have it up very loud, but you right. can hear what's going on. So yeah. The really 2i2 cool. is a great basic interface, but when you want a little bit more flexibility, it's stepping up to like the AG03 yes. from Yamaha is a nice option. Yeah. Now you were working on a studio this week and some, oh, you did boy. some interesting stuff. Yeah, it was, it was, this was a studio project that started, uh, well, the first meeting was a year and a half ago. Construction started about four months ago. It went about two months longer than he expected. As and, most construction projects do. Yes. And we decided, um, due to one thing or another, uh, we decided it was time to build the acoustic panels ourselves. So instead of ordering them from one of our favorite vendors, we just decided to source everything and do it in house. And he had a very a good contractor who was on hand and available and was willing to build all the frames. The homeowner, whose name is Keith Farley, uh, he's a, a voiceover director and voice actor himself. Uh, he was willing to go downtown, downtown LA and find the fabric that he wanted. He had a very specific aesthetic that mm -hmm. he was looking for. Um, but actually while I, while I talk, maybe we can show the video while I'm talking because it's, it's a silent video. There shouldn't be any audio. Um, all that's right. The well, core video. And then there's another one that's the studio just is fully online now. So what's just going let on that here? play. I'll net. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So this is the, um, hoisting of the ceiling cloud. The acoustical cloud, they call it, that goes over the mixing position. So most voice actors, this isn't of a big concern to you because you're in the booth, then you're editing a voice track, you send it off. Right. Keith is one step beyond that. He produces. He wants to make sure that what he completes in that studio is ready to go in the air. He wants to hear it accurately and without any reflection off the ceiling, things like that. So we hung this panel. It doesn't look that big in the picture, but it's about four by six feet. Mm-hmm. And this was the process we went through to hang it. And, uh, our producer, Susan's son, I was going to say, isn't that hat? He is <laughs> in the room. He was helping us out. He was, he was, uh, my, my helper for the, for this project. We worked on these panels. I worked on these panels all day, Thursday, half the day, Friday. We hung half of them Friday. And then we hung this big boy, uh, yesterday. That looks great. It even goes with the painting there. Yeah. Well, it, it you know, it looks, it looks like a painting, doesn't it? Yeah. That is the window into the studio. 
Wow. You're actually looking through glass oh, into oh, the I see. studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. other video, we, actually, you know what? Play the other one, Susan, would you? Because it shows a little bit more of what's going on in the studio. Um, <sighs> the Keith's place. There we go. Now you get a little more perspective. Oh, oh, I see. That was like an ultra wide lens, weird, yeah, distorted yeah. shot. Yeah. This shows the studio. But um, Keith, uh, he's got a very particular one. eye. Dude, he wanted enough. a specific color fabric. He he's wanted, you know, an interesting color scheme. And, you know, he um, went out of his way to find this color the fabric. Space above the glass it wasn't easy to find with, in, with that was a good acoustical but, fabric. Mm -hmm. Guilford of Maine is the this company close in to, Maine that sells to, this really this amazing right acoustic really fabric, but they did not have this color in stock. So he had to scramble, mm -hmm. and he went to downtown L.A. and found it at this place called Home. And uh, it was like a fraction of the cost. It was mm -hmm. like five bucks a yard. Wow. And if you've shopped for fabric, that's and, a really good deal. And I have. Yeah. So if you're looking for a place to get fabric for acoustic panels, mm -hmm. I can tell you this is a, this is a great resource. This fabric yeah. is fantastic. See, people who, who build these wonderful voiceover palaces, as I like to call them, you know, and, and for me, decorating, you know, I go for the, you know, the Apple, well, no, the Applebee's atmosphere, <laughs> right. the collections, the, the collections and the atmosphere. airplanes and all that other stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I, I suppose I could go for really nice, you know, symmetrical panels. Mm -hmm. mm. The diamond thing was totally <laughs> Keith's idea. Yeah. Hanging everything on diamond shapes, but it, right. it came out well. So the cloud thing was interesting but then you had a story about clouds too where were you you saw some oh cloud panels being oh well used. our good friend tim friedlander just opened up reopened his studio remember we were there last fall yeah, uh, la or, what's it or, called or, the uh, soundbox. LA, la soundbox soundbox LA. and he redid the whole studio it was you know it was a music studio and a voiceover studio and he enhanced the isolation of the booth he right? did he put a double it door down. and uh, all that kind of stuff yeah. Still using my old ventilation box from Buffalo, made out of the HP printer box. I love it. You don't see it. It's in another room. No, it's room. behind a curtain. But yeah, it's totally. Yeah. And, um, he, you know, I went in there because I had a meeting with him and somebody else, and we were, he says, hey, listen to what it sounds like in here. I'm mm -hmm. like, I hear a couple of nodes. Yeah. And it was very obvious. And what he eventually ended up doing was buying a couple of very big clouds like that big black one and I'm like mm -hmm. you know the big black cloud over your head <laughs> and uh and then he they hung those right before a party saturday night when he was officially dedicating the studio if you dedicate a studio yeah uh and um it it sounded great it really did did he hang them from magnets no, he did not hang them from magnets. <laughs> no, he these things are way he too Actually, heavy. he actually was wiring just before the party, apparently, just oh, before I, I I'm up. sure it was a scramble to get those yeah. up in time. Yeah, but Tim, that looked great. And yeah. by the way, before we, we take a break here, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully uh, Pat is out there watching. Pat Sweeney, our good friend oh, yeah. in Toronto, is a little under the weather, and uh, we wish you the best and uh, hope everything works out for you there. Um, Thinking about you, Pat. Yeah, absolutely. Give you a... Pat on the back. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, Tracy Lindley's coming up, and uh, we're going to talk about LinkedIn and how to market better there right after this. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality consult with someone who knows the truth someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios he knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover your home Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Well, let me tell you about one of our great sponsors at Source Elements at source-elements.com. They're creators of many tools voice actors need to connect to their studios to other studios around the world. One of the great tools that they're uh, putting out there and right now is in beta is Source Connect Now. It's totally free and it allows you to connect to your clients, other recording studios, all over a Chrome web browser 
or it can be done using their built-in or they're actually their own downloaded application. And what's the advantage of something like that versus using Chrome? The downloaded standalone application for Source Connect Now makes it impervious to things that Google Chrome releases and sometimes causes issues with your audio codecs. So it's a great tool, totally free. You can give it a try today, start using it, and your clients don't even have to own it. All you got to do is send them a link to your session and they can connect and listen to you in really high fidelity. And it's a great substitute for something like Source Connect. Uh, well, Source Connect, more so a good a substitute for Skype. So give it a try. If you'd like to give it a try or if you'd like to use their full range of products, go to SourceElements.com. So that's Source-Elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial of Source Connect right away. Thanks for watching, and we'll be right back here with Dan and Tracy. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. All right, it's time to introduce our guest. You know, Tracy Limley is a full-time voice talent, and mother of four young children who lives in Kansas City. Hello. But there's more to it than that. Yes, I know. <laughs> but she is a passionate, she's passionate about building relationships and uses a free LinkedIn account to find clients and book work with major brands like Microsoft, eBay, Visa, American Heart Association, Procter & Gamble, and more. And let's welcome to Voice Over Body Shop our good friend Tracy Lindley. There she is. Hi. All right. Thanks How's for it? having me. Oh, it's a pleasure having you on. How you been? I'm great. I'm that's great. Th that's good. Spring is on the way. Yeah. We had some ice last week, but nice and nice and warm today. Yeah. Are you, are you presenting at VO Atlanta? Yes, I am. I have a breakout session on Friday yeah. at 4.30. Cool. All right. Well, maybe I'll drop in on that one. Let's see what's Come going on. Come on over. Yes. I'm um, not handing out candy, though. Oh, well. Ooh, I could hand out candy. That's good, though, because candy is dehydrating, and that's the last thing you want when you're stuck in a huge building for four days with air conditioning. With 600 other people. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, so, Tracy, we'll get to talk about uh, LinkedIn in just a little bit here. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. How does you know a lovely mo mother of four in, in Kentucky become a voice actor, or why? Well, I'm in Kansas City. But, oh, Kansas um... City. Okay. <laughs> Kansas City, Kentucky. It, it, the K place. So I'm sorry. K. That's right. I'm sorry. That's Go ahead. All right. Um, I am a mother of four. I love children and I've actually been reading out loud to kids and I tried to read out loud to my own brother, but I'm only a year and a half older than him. So I've been reading out loud to kids my entire life. I used to volunteer at the library and read out loud to children. And so I've just been kind of doing that my whole life and never knew there was an industry until I had an internship at a cable company and I would read for them and they'd pay me 20 bucks a spot because I didn't know any better. And I'd be like, yeah, and I get it in three takes or I would just do three because, you know, a couple for safety. Right. And I, I really enjoyed it. And pretty soon I had my third child and I was hauling a baby carrier and two toddlers in with me to this guy's <laughs> studio to read these spots. And I was like, dude, this is not worth it. I'm not doing it anymore. I got to quit. And he's like, you know, you can do this from your own studio, right? I'm like, no, I did not know that. So I started researching like crazy. And that was January 2014. And four years later, I'm here. Hmm. So it's amazing. And, and you're doing all this great work with all a lot of these big companies. So obviously you're doing something right. How did you stumble into LinkedIn and, and what was your process for, for starting to use that? Yeah. Were you early in on the LinkedIn thing? Yeah. No. Um, that was part of the learning process and stumble would be the right word because I didn't really know what I was doing at first. I think a lot of times we're all kind of learning about social media as we go along, but I'm really glad that I did get on LinkedIn because that started to be one that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I didn't join until... January 2014, when a friend told me, get on LinkedIn. He also told me to get on Fiverr. So I'm really glad I did not listen on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, cool. <laughs> so, all right. So you're you're on there. Why, why do you think LinkedIn is the most powerful social media platform for booking voice work? Well, I mean, that's the only, it's not the only, but it is the most popular professional social networking site. It has about 500 million users, which doesn't hold a candle to Facebook, but the the people on there are not going to be posting about what they had for lunch. Right. It's very, um, it's very different in the way it, in the way it works. Well, they shouldn't be. Yeah, really. Well, there is some, but yeah, I don't <laughs> like that stuff. You don't get a thumbs up for me if you tell me about your lunch. Right. But so, it's, it's a really great website because people are on there for professional reasons. So and politics is mostly left out, which is great for me. Um, I, I don't like to read that stuff. I just want to network with people. I want to um, socialize for professional reasons. And um, it's great for that. It's, a, it's mostly for B2B, business to business. And it's instead of, as opposed to B2C, business to consumer. And so it's a great resource for that. Mm -hmm. oh, fabulous. All right. So it's a process and you've got a, you've got a course that you're teaching on this. Uh, and I guess you've got some very specific steps to doing it. So there's three steps to turning LinkedIn into a prospecting gold mine. Tell us about well, it. Well, yeah, I mean, basically there are three steps. So the first one is to optimize your profile, make it as awesome as possible. The second one is to find and connect with the people that you know will use your services and are looking but just don't know you're there. And then the third one is to send them a message that's going to make them want to work with you. So nothing spammy, nothing needy, but just, hey, here I am. I'm a resource for you. Hmm. So you write to them. And so, you, so what, 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 what's the, what is the first thing you do? I mean, to reach out to people. I mean, what are you looking for and stuff? Well, I always tell people you don't want to reach out to them until you've got your profile looking really nice. And a lot of times that can be quite a mystery to people because they're not sure what to write. They're not sure what to put on their profile. So that's something I talk about in the course. But there are some basic things. I mean, basically about 50% of LinkedIn users only fill out partial, partially their profile. So if you fill out the entire thing, then you already have a leg up over the competition. So I tell people to do that, but then as I go along, I want to give them more information on how to actually do it. So first of all, you know what, you want to start with a great profile picture. I think that you should use a professional to shoot that for you. You definitely don't want to have um, a beer in your hand. You don't want to be wearing anything scandalous. Uh, you don't really want to have someone else in the picture with you because then they're like, well, which person's which for this profile? So I always tell people to start with a professional headshot. And then with the background photo, which is um, the larger photo that you'll see, um, that one I tell them, you know, there are some different ideas for that. You can use a quote from a customer. You can use, um, I've got a picture of myself, but it has kind of some fun um, elements in it. And I always tell people, put your website and your email address in there so that they don't actually have to connect with you to get that information. Cause the whole point is to get them to contact you, check out your website, check out your demos and see if you're a good fit for the voiceover job. Right. Cause you can post your demos there. Oh yeah. Um, and some people aren't sure how to do that. So there's sections in the summer, the summary section and the job experience section, both have opportunities to upload media. And so I always tell people, upload them in both because you don't know where people are going to be looking. Um, LinkedIn keeps changing, and now it's where above the fold, you have to click it to get to those media samples. So people might scroll down instead, and if you've got them listed in your job experience section, that's very helpful. Mm, that's where mine are. <laughs> of course, yeah, I, of well, course I have all-star status in LinkedIn. It's just like, you know, you've been here. I've, I've been there. I was an early adopter, so. Um, but actually, can you, if, if you share your screen with us, Tracy, you can actually show us your page and some of the, some, and, and actually point out some of those things. Okay. Um, just go to the I bottom, was... click on share screen, and then just go to your, your uh, LinkedIn page. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, good. I wasn't prepared though, because I was told I couldn't share my screen. So just a second. Oh, who told you that? I'm not naming names. Okay. 
I'm not here to get anybody in trouble. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me do that for you. Okay. She's she sprayed it during presentations. It, Can you guys it, see it, my screen? Not quite yet, but we. Oh. Could be an issue on my end. Because I'm sharing my screen with you. Oh, so okay. Maybe that's your that screen. Yeah, yeah okay. A, Never mind yeah. then. All right. I'm sorry. But if you come to my presentation at VO, at VO Atlanta, you can see it. And I'd be happy to help anybody who wants to hire me for consulting. But I, I don't do a lot of that because I have limited time. But the course is great. It has all this stuff in it because a lot of it is visual. And I kind of discovered that um, you have to see it to understand what all the steps are and how to work it. So the course has a lot of things like that. It has screen sharing options. It has some PowerPoint slides, which I try to make as fun as possible. There are unicorns involved. <laughs> and um, I kick off each of the six modules with a, an, a, a little on-camera introduction for me just to make it fun. Okay. I try to learn. I, I like to learn when it's fun. I mean, don't you? It's got to be oh, fun, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, actually, we, if we put this on DAW view, if you go to my my uh, my MacBook Air there, so we can actually show uh, Tracy's page. That's cute. That's just cute uh, as, as can be. Um, you should have my it should be on in there. Yes. No. The air. The air. Just hold on one second. We'll get it. Okay. That's the great thing about an informal TV show. We can we can do these sorts of things. That's and, right. You know, we Wait, just. I have a big old question mark. Really? Well, we didn't test this before the show because we didn't know we were going to do that. Right. <laughs> just one. Oh, okay. Never mind. All right. Well, let's go on and, and talk a little bit more about what's an effective way to use it. Um, how do you get noticed on LinkedIn for the right reasons? Because you got people who are everything, you know, I'm starting to get a lot of requests from people who are like financial managers and, uh, you know, they're the strategic planners. And I'm like, why is this person trying to contact me? I don't quite get that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And how do you, how do you separate yourself from all that? Well, a lot of the, the tips that I just gave you, those are basic things on how to set your profile apart from other people's. So you want to look as professional as possible. You want to also tell the whole truth about yourself, um, but you don't have to list every job you've ever had. In fact, I don't. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was a claims adjuster way back when, and that really doesn't play into voiceover too much, although... I am trying to get more into the automotive market. So there's a chance I may add that. But, um, you know, I mean, you want to try to keep it relevant to what you're doing now. So um, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to tell you without showing you. But I do tell people in my course about checking your settings to make sure that you don't blast your notifications to your network. Because uh, it gets really annoying if you see so-and-so change their phone number. So-and-so uploaded this picture it just it's not it's not anything that anybody needs to know so I tell people to change their settings on that I also talk about how to set it up so that it's gonna work within your workflow for instance the way I do it is if I'm gonna connect with somebody I, I send the you send the request and then I want to know once they've connected back with me so I changed my settings so that I can get an email for each of those notify it'll notify me by email every time someone connects back with me because then I use that as an opportunity to send them a message. And when you're talking to people, you always want to keep in mind that it's about them. And I really liked Dave's um, blog post. I read it this morning about networking and it's the same with LinkedIn. You want to always keep the other person the focus. Talk about, you know, address it from their perspective. What are their pain points? When someone's hiring a voice talent, they want to make sure that that person knows what they're doing. And you can demonstrate that by your, by your work samples and by showing professionalism in your pictures. Also, um, you want to, um, hang on, I lost my train of thought there. Um, 
So you want to you want to look at things from their perspective. And they also want to make sure that you've got a great studio so you can have a studio picture in your samples if you want. So those are just some things to think about about how to set you apart. But with the message, um, you just want to think about them. You don't want to go on and on and on about yourself. I always tell people to try to keep it, you know, under 150 words if you can. And that way it's going to keep you from talking too much about yourself. Right. Do, do be a resource and do be helpful, but you don't need to tell them about every piece of equipment in your studio, even if it makes you really excited. Or, or if they ask. If they ask, go ahead and tell them. Absolutely. But for the introductory message, keep it pretty casual and chill. Right. This, this, now, this is a networking site. It's not sales, sales, sales. Like all I ever get on Twitter in my direct messaging are those auto bot things. Right. And Twitter, I don't love. I just joined Instagram. I love Facebook to network with my colleagues and to keep in touch with friends. But LinkedIn for business reasons is my absolute favorite because, you know, because we talked about it. The reasons are the professionalism. People are on there because they want to help each other in their businesses. So they expect that type of networking. Um, but they don't like a lot of sales. So keep that in mind. Everything has to be really casual. I mean, we see it when we're looking at scripts. The specs always say non-announcery, not salesy. Right. And it comes to the same points no when we're talking Thank about you. sending messages to people. You don't want it to be so in your face salesy. Do you think there's any advantage to the LinkedIn groups versus groups in other platforms? Um, you know, being a, should you participate in the LinkedIn groups more than the Facebook groups? Cause I know for me personally, I'm in the Facebook groups constantly, but not in the LinkedIn groups. Is that a mistake? You know, I think it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So for me, I want to network and get to know video producers, instructional designers, those people that are going to hire me. And normally what I get hired for through LinkedIn um, are things like mostly e-learning, corporate videos, some commercials. But I would say that corporate videos and e-learning have been my, my best genres. But it also depends on what you're going for. If whatever you're trying to get, that's probably what you're going to get. So those are the people that you want to search for. If you search for video producers, you could come up with a mix of commercial corporate video and explainer videos. Um, Which is fun. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'll take all. I love it all. It's a lot of fun, whatever falls into your plate. But there's some, you know, you just never know who you're going to meet. And that is the fun part about it. It's a surprise. And I will, I have contacted people like a year and a half ago and they and then they, out of the blue will send me an email saying I have this project for you and I have never heard back. Sometimes I will send people three and four messages without getting anything. And then all of a sudden I hear, I get a ding in my inbox and Hey, can I get a quote on this project? You never know what you're going to find. So it's a, it's an adventure. Yeah. So actually, well, George was talking about you know, joining groups can you look for groups of producers and video producers? Are there, I mean, there's groups for just about everything. Yes. I'm uh, so sorry. I forgot to address that. Yeah. Yeah. You want to, with those groups, um, you want to look for, yes, the groups of video producers. You want to look for your clients. I don't think it's great to look for a bunch of voiceover groups because for the most part, I find that people enjoy hanging out on Facebook. Um, I kind of started a LinkedIn group at one point and it was, it was a lot of people joined it. But then I would address a question and, and it wouldn't get a lot of response. So I just shut it down because I was like, I don't even have time for that. But um, Facebook is kind of where I find that our colleagues hang out mostly. But with the people that you're trying to attract, that's definitely a great place to be. You don't want to be on there spamming like, hey, check out my website and all that. But you do want to thoughtfully join the discussion. And I find that it's a great place to educate myself about their industry and what they're doing. Oh, I would think so. I mean, I wouldn't think, you know, what do you, what, what do video producers talk about? I don't know. I don't either. The next new switcher, the next version of Wirecast. I don't know. Yeah, stuff like that. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Jump into the group and you'll find out. I know. I know. And I know. a lot of these things are like, I don't even know. Um, with the instructional designers, they'll be like talking about all this stuff that I don't really understand. 
but I do want to attempt to, I want to get into their world as much as I can. So it's a great place. And, yeah. and on the, it has a news feed kind of like Facebook has, and that's the majority of where I end up spending my time other than groups because it's, it's more interactive I'm finding. Um, and it's, and everybody can see it that's in their network and mine. So it's, it can be, um, a wider audience, but there are some, there are some groups with just thousands of people in them. There's a video group that I'm in. That's, I think it's like 36,000 people. Hmm. So, oh, that's a big group. <laughs> right. Not going to meet, not going to network a whole lot with that. You might meet a few, but interesting. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun. It's just, it's, you always want to keep that other person in mind. The client is, and what their needs are. It should be, should be your main focus. Oh, absolutely. Uh, if you're just joining us, where you been? Uh, but if you are, we're talking with Tracy Lindley, uh, talking about marketing your voiceover business on LinkedIn. And if you've got a question for her, I know Jack Daniel is in the chat room. He's not here physically with us tonight. Ari has his seat on the couch tonight. <laughs> and uh, he'll take your question and relay it to us, and uh, we'll get that to Tracy, because I know there are so many details to LinkedIn as you were talking about the settings and you know, you can download your entire list of people and there's all sorts of cool things you can do. So I'm sure people have lots of questions about that. And I know there's a lot of people that say I've, you know, they've taken your course. They do a, a tremendous amount of marketing on, uh, on LinkedIn and uh, you know, maybe they can share some stuff as well about mm -hmm. uh, how they do these things. Uh, so just throw that in the chat room and we'll, we'll, we'll get to those questions. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's really, I guess, important, cause you were talking about how don't talk about yourself too much because you want to make it about them. So what's the most important thing potential clients want to know about you or me or George? Well, they want, they want to know how you're going to solve their problem. You need to instill confidence in them. By letting them know that number one, you know what you're doing. And number two, you're there to help them. I, I love helping clients. I don't mind last minute stuff. I don't mind revisions. I mean, I love to help them. I want to make them happy. So if that's your focus, instead of, oh my gosh, these people are inconveniencing me, then you're going to have a better time in your business because you're going to be seen as helpful and um, indispensable. We all want to be indispensable. We do not want to be solicitous. We right. don't want to always be, here's my stuff. Here's my stuff. So that's, that's kind of the main thing that I always talk about is yeah. make it about them. Um, but, but let them know that you know what they're doing and you understand their pain points. And that comes into play, especially when you're writing your summary section. And um, it's okay to tell a little bit of story about yourself, maybe your background. I read, um, one person's that talks about how she, um, she's, she talked about kind of storytelling and, and how she loved to act. That's great. She didn't go overboard with it. It was just short, but it was a really interesting little personal story that helps you kind of get to know somebody. That's the style of the biography, the bios and the summaries that we're seeing. It's, it's less formal. And I always tell people write in the first person, think about it when you're writing it, think about it as if you and I are just talking over coffee or we're having a business lunch. You want to keep it professional, but keep it as, you know, as, as personal too as, that you can. It's kind of a, it's kind of a blend, but you don't want to share, you don't want to overshare, but you also want to make sure that it's not as if someone were announcing you on a stage. Right. It's first person, like you're talking to them. Right. And you could actually be drinking coffee while you're doing it. So it'd be like actually having coffee. Great thing about these sites. Again, we're talking with Tracy Lindley. And if you've got a question for her, throw it in the chat room and uh, we'll be happy to uh, address that one. Um, using LinkedIn, and, I, and I've used it for years and years and years. Um, it's, as you said, it's about establishing relationships with people. And you start to look at your list and you're like, God, that's a long list of people. Um, but trying to find new people and... Uh, how do you, I mean, how do you approach them? I, I, you, I remember you talking something about you send them a letter or you send them a, a message and, and how do you, how do you break the ice with someone like that? 
Okay. Well, I like to tell people to try, definitely check out their profile, see what you can learn about them. Um, if they are a video producer, they probably have a demo reel or a sizzle reel. Check that out. There's got to be something in there you like. Don't lie. And if you absolutely hate it, don't say you love it. I, I always <laughs> say to be truthful. But I believe that there's something good about everyone. So there's got to be something in there that you like. Figure hmm. it out. Maybe you like the music. Um, maybe you could compliment the lighting. I don't know. If you're really struggling, just try your hardest. Right. But um, whatever you can see about them from their profile Talk about that. Give them a give them a quick compliment. Don't, you know, be mushy and go overboard, but definitely try to say something nice. I mean, we all love compliments. You guys love compliments, right? And but we rarely get them, which is <laughs> sad but true. But well, I'm sure you have a lot of people who love this show. I know I'm one of them. <laughs> and um I think it's also really cool that you did the whole send your studio picture in. You guys are so interactive and a lot of fun. But I See, can give that you was a good example of that. <laughs> okay. Because I know something about you and there's always something good about someone that you can share. So look for that. Maybe look for, I always tell people try to look for common ground as well. Sometimes you can search for people by, you can search for people by school. So if you went to a large uh, university, you can search for other alumni. So that's an option to find people. It's always good to look for common ground because then you already have a talking point. You got something to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break right now. And again, if you've got a question for Tracy Lindley, uh, talking about LinkedIn and marketing there, throw it in the chat room and uh, we'll continue our exploration of LinkedIn right after these messages. So stay tuned. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Truth Teller Headphones, and especially that they must never rely on earbuds, noise-canceling headsets, or any cans touted for... Their deep bass or explosive gaming experience. X bass. So, yes. What you need are the Harlan Hogan voice over optimized headphones. And here, no, uh, it's, it doesn't really do that. But, but they're great because they're they're great isolation headphones. But the most important thing is is that they're just the ticket, especially with the many 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 of you out there who are narrators who master using uh, headphones. They also get audio truth that they must hear and the comfort of memory foam ear pads. See that? George likes them. I like them. They're, I just got a new bed with memory foam in it, and it's it's really good. Very Imagine comfy. what it's like on your ears. But anyway, those are covered with real leather and amazingly lightweight design. Hey, tech them some to, you know, teach them something for us. A surprising number of buyers don't realize that lurking inside the professional quarter-inch plug is a mini plug. It's right here, this little tiny guy. So you get an adapter. It can go into the quarter-inch. It can go into the, the mini plug. Yeah, I know it sounds stupid, but we regularly get complaints and concerns that they can't plus their brand-new headphones in their iPad or MicPort Pro or whatever. I think you meant plug plug it did yeah little typo there but you can you can take this and put it into your ipad or your iphone and there you go this and, one has the adapter on it yeah see the harlan hogan signature series voice optimized headphones 
You want them. They're made of metal. They have a great band on them. They're flexible. You want to buy them. And the thing is, is you want to buy them from one place, the only place you can buy them, which is voiceoveressentials.com. Now go down to the bottom of our page. You'll see Harlan talking into a Portabooth Plus or Pro, or and I think he's wearing the Signature Series Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones. Chances are he is. There's always a good chance of that. Uh, they're at a great price point. They're not great for listening to Pink Floyd on because there's the response is so flat. They're pretty flat. They're true. They're not designed to be exciting. No, they are. They give you the actual sound that you <clears throat> created, which mm-hmm. is what's most important. That's right. So go over there right now and uh, click on that link. Go buy them. Everybody should be wearing them. Thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor for seven years. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. That good old-fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on I can also talk more about the course if there's... Okay, well, we're going to do that. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Uh, We do have a few audience questions, though. And uh, are you ready for some of those? I'm ready. Bring it. All righty. Howard Ellison. Oh, Howard. Hello. Yes. Yeah. From, from I, I, he can't UK. possibly be listening. It's three in the morning in England. He says, what can any of us do to alert LinkedIn to the deteriorating user friendliness of its website? People there are as helpful and wide awake as ever, but it's gotten much harder to navigate to one's groups and previous comments. And when someone reaches out in friendship, you get no reliable confirmation of your profile acknowledgement. Not even a button gray out. These issues are not good for business and not good for LinkedIn. Hmm. Gee, what a rant. Any thoughts about that? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I can tell you that I met Howard a couple of years ago, I think it was, or three years ago, um, in a LinkedIn group. So, um, hey, Howard, how's it going? Um, But I, I think I'm trying to decipher what the question is in there, but I think that you're looking to know if someone... Let me just. He, I think he's sort of read your message. What? I think he's sort of ranting about the user interface yeah. and LinkedIn changing. Which I have to say to Howard, I understand the frustration of user interfaces changing. Skype. What the heck did they do with Skype in the last version? Insane, nuts. Yeah. But Facebook that is un- changes things on a weekly basis. But that is unfortunately the way of things. You know, and you have to be able to kind of move with the changes. You know, it's right. it's a bummer. Yeah. Do you, do, do you find that the, the interface of LinkedIn right now to be, you know, in any way distracting from using it? It's okay. Um, I don't love the notifications, but that's why I address that by changing my settings. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's really important to personalize it, make it your own as much as you can. But with the settings, you're allowed to change how often you want to get emails, what you want to get an email for. Right, right. And I think the two most important settings to change are to receive an individual email every time someone sends you a request to connect with you, and also to receive an individual email when they accept an invitation that you have extended to them. And also, any time that you've obviously received a message, that should be a number one priority because I have people sending me actual scripts in a LinkedIn message. So you want to get those right away. But I have found that there's about a 25 minute delay between when someone sends me a message and when it lands in my inbox. Mm. And I know that is not my email because I'm hosted with Brad Newman at upper level and it is quick. So you will, it is not on my end. So LinkedIn is clunky, and I tell people that. It is, but it's also very powerful. Yeah. So I will take the good with the bad. But right. as far as someone, you know when someone's checked your message that you sent, because you'll actually see in the corner that it's been read. So if you look at the message thread, you'll see that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, also, you can see when someone's checked out your profile. Well, that was that was my next question, was like, what if somebody's checked your profile? Because I get those emails, you know, once a week. I'd like to get them every day to say, you know, 25 people looked at your profile today, but you know, it's like four or five people have actually looked at your profile. Now, I guess there's a premium, uh, LinkedIn that allows you to actually see who it was, I guess. 
but you're you're talking about just using the the free version of this, right? And and right. if you see that thing for someone's been checking your profile, what's a good action to take? Oh, check and check out their profile right away. I had an instructional designer for I don't want to say which company, but one that I would love to work for. It involves home interior, which I'm nuts about. And this person was an instructional designer and I'd connected with him about a year and a half ago. And I saw that he was poking around, checking out my profile. So I sent him a message. I didn't, you know, we're already connected. So I wasn't like, hey, you creeper. But instead, I just said, hey, I noticed that you recently viewed my profile. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm here if you have any questions. Let me know if there's something I can help you with. So again, the helpful attitude, right? So he comes back with this. Yeah, you know, we've never used professional voice talent for our uh, training. But we're thinking about doing that. And I was showing your samples to some of my colleagues through your LinkedIn profile. So that made me realize how important it is. Once again, it just kind of affirmed the fact that you've got to have your demos really easily up there, not just your website. I tell people to put their video, put their audio demo into a video form so that you can just link it to your profile. And that I found that's very helpful. But they also, a lot of times, mostly end up checking out my website, too, because they want to see what kind of person I am and just get more information than just a demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Devox had a question because you are clearly into interior design based on that interesting <laughs> background. Yeah, yes. He wanted to know what I'm like Jack DeGolia, by the way. Right. I asked <laughs> earlier about this before the show, but Devox wants to know what's in the background. Is that an acoustical panel behind you? Or is it decorative? What are we looking at behind you? It's really cool. It is a very fancy and custom made stick on wallpaper from Target. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, from Target. All right. Target. Yeah. I think you mean. Target. Tar My kids love to pick at the corner. So <laughs> I need to get some like super glue, put that down. But yeah, you too can have a lovely space. And, and I also have this, this orchid right here. So mm. I, I like interior design. It's fun. So I think it's fun to, that's what's great about voiceover because whatever you love, you can target, you can find anybody on LinkedIn. I'm into interior design. I like food. Uh, I don't like a lot of stuff. But whatever you're into, you can target those people or you can, um, you know, you can find instructional designers for certain companies you like. The world is your oyster and LinkedIn has the people you need to connect with. So that's why I really look at it as an adventure rather than drudgery. I mean, people think marketing is so dull and boring. And I'm like, who can I meet today? <laughs> It's really fun. Right. Well, that that, that that is fun. Now you have an, you're teaching a course on this. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I um I created a course because as you know, Dan, I believe you were in my Fatcon they, presentation. Yep. Yep. I was uh, one of the first ones. And that's where it all started. Um Amy Snively has created an amazing place where people are free to share. They become the presenters and even as a pretty new voice talent a couple years ago. Um, this, you know, I was feeling pretty insecure because it was my first conference that I'd ever been to. And I, with trepidation, you know, put my little card up on the wall and kind of hoped and prayed that nobody would put their sticker on it because I was scared to talk to everyone and, about and you my. packed the room. <laughs> I show up and there's a there's standing room only. And I'm like, holy moly, well, I guess I'm doing this. But before that, it was covered with stickers. So I'm like, okay, well, crap. Now I have to come up with a presentation on the fly. But <laughs> I, I had brought my laptop, and that's how the conference works. That's how that one works is you got to be really ready to go if somebody likes your topic. And I just didn't know that I had something of value. I kind of just figured everybody used LinkedIn like that. So <laughs> when it became apparent that everybody didn't. And I was like, oh, okay. And I just keep getting email after email and just people always wanting to know more about LinkedIn. And I didn't ask for this, but people just kind of wanted to know more. And so I, I did some consulting for a while and I just don't have a lot of time. And so I wanted to create something that was prepackaged, but had everything that I would ever tell someone in a consultation. Mm -hmm. So I created the LinkedIn edge and you can see that at the LinkedIn edge.com. And if you go there, you'll, you'll see a table of contents. I put in there what the modules are about. There's 
two hours of video content, but I don't like to waste people's time. I like to pack in as much information as I can. All videos are tightly edited to take out breaths and annoying, you know, if I had a pause while I was changing slides, I just don't want to waste anybody's time for a second. And I have a whole bunch of different downloads too that they can keep, including one of my favorite ones, which is how to rock LinkedIn every day. And it's just some tips um, like, well, of course, check your messages, check your notifications, check your email, but then just, you know, join in with a thread that's going. There was a great one by an instructional designer that I had done some work for, and he brought up a great conversation and all these other instructional designers are chiming in. So what I did was I, I looked at their comments and a lot of them had really cool stuff to say. So I actually reached out to those people on the thread and I was like, hey, I love what you said about this on so-and-so's thread. I would love to connect with you. And so when you do that, you're, you're organically finding that business and building those relationships in a fun and personal way. So that's just one of the things you can get. Um, I've got a DIY template because that background picture is really hard. But even if you have that DIY template, sometimes people still struggle. So I have somebody that I refer them to for a, a very low price. She'll const And I didn't make my own background. I tell people that. It's difficult. So I like to enlist the help of a graphic designer. I'm all about outsourcing if it's not a strength because I want it to be amazing and not just my mediocre graphic designer skills. Right. And you got kids to feed. So, you know, again, you don't have time for everything like that. My kids right. do eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Jolene asked a question about uh, your LinkedIn bio. Should you write it in this third person or the first person? Some people say one, some say the other. What do you think? Well, I did address that earlier, Jolene, but perhaps yeah. you were busy, but the first person. So Jolene, when you're, you. when you're writing that bio, you're talking to me as a prospective client. You're talking to someone over coffee that you would really like to work for. So keep it casual, keep it first person and just, you know, whatever you would say to someone, if they say, Hey, Jolene, what do you do? And so that's your summary section. And then, what, then I tell people when you get into the job experience section, that's when someone has gone beyond your elevator pitch and is like, so um, what kind of stuff have you done in voiceover? And then that's when you get into more specifics. Got so it. that's kind of how you can differentiate those two as well. Mm -hmm. Sandy also asks, um, of course, that she loves your program. Um, is your insight, and I think you mentioned this, do you only use the free version of LinkedIn or do you find there's some advantages to using the pro version or the paid version? You know, I find that I can get so much business just by using the free version that that's what I stick with. Now, the mm -hmm. premium version does have some features, but a lot of the stuff that they are wanting to charge you for are things that recruiters need or job seekers. Ah. I do want to know who's been viewing my profile because you can only see a limited number, but that's one. And, and also you get unlimited searches if you buy the really premium package, but even the middle ground one, you don't have unlimited searches. So in my course, I have kind of a workaround and a, a, a secret weapon that you can use to still continue to look for people and find and do those searches. Ooh. And I also have, I, I help people create searches that'll come straight to your inbox. So you don't even have to go look for them. Oh, yeah. A list. Automate the whole thing. It, it's, it's <laughs> sending you leads. It's sending you the stuff it, you yeah. need. You that, can set it up and I'll show you how. Oh, great. Uh, Paul Stefano asks, or he says, I accept pretty much anybody sending me a connection on LinkedIn. I figure the more, the merrier. Is that bad? I would say that I accept almost everyone. Some, there are some countries that are sketchy to want to work with, or you know they might be known for low rates. Mostly I'll accept anybody unless if I look on there and they have like five connections, I always look at people. And I, and if there, I have gotten some creepy people, but not too many, just less than a handful of people like, oh, you have a really hot profile picture. No, <laughs> I just got one of those emails a couple days ago. It happens. There are some creepy people, but a whole lot less creepy people than, than Facebook. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, I just posted a thing on my professional Facebook profile saying how I can't believe how many requests I get on Facebook. When I look at who the common friends are, 
that are of this friend, quote unquote, they're all men. And then I click on to see who this person is, and it's almost never something legit. Right. It's usually spam. Yeah. Well, well dressed spam, but spam nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, not, go ahead. Well, because it's not personal in nature, I right. don't screen people too much. I'm not going to be posting pictures of my kids or my personal life unless I want everybody to see it. So I really don't. I mean, I think about things before I post them. Um, so because I'm not posting a lot of things about my family and I need to protect my children, I don't really screen people too carefully. And most of the time you're going to find that people are either voice actors that are connecting with you or people that might give you work. Or there's the third category of people who I have a great voice. Could you tell me how to get into voiceover? (laughs) And so I'll try to help them as much as I can. And then I have a resource list that I say, send me your email and I'll send you this resource list. Okay. And if you get through it, then we'll talk. They'll never get through it. That's a very popular <laughs> question. Adam Lofbaum says, hey, Tracy, how do you know when it's time to shift from the getting to know you stage and go for the ask? The second Ooh, message, the one, third, when, did, when are you going for the kill? Okay. I think you have to really feel them out because let them ask the questions. I always say, be a resource. Let them drop your website and your email after your name when you're signing off of, from your, what I call, um, introductory message or intro message. So the process for me would work. I find them. They connect with me. I send them a message. Now, if they send back a message and all it says is thanks or it's a thumbs up emoji, do not go in for the cell. They're not that interested, okay? But if they've got more skin in the game, like they start asking you, hey, can you send me a rate sheet? Hey, can you send me a quote? Um, If they ask any questions that make them seem interested, I, I, I consider that an in. But if all they say is thanks, then no. But if they say, I'll add you to my list or I'll keep you in mind for the future, then I write back saying something like, um, okay, that sounds awesome. Thank you so much for that. I know Melissa Motes is one that talks about how often she says the words, thank you. And I think those cannot be overused. Um, Definitely thank them for connecting. Thank them for their time. Thank them for any message they might send back to you. Thank them for their time. I think I said that one. But people's time is valuable. So um, that's when I just say back to them, all right, that sounds great. I would love to help you if you have one, if you have any questions or if they didn't ask for my rate sheet, but they have asked me some sort of question, you can ask if you want me to send me, if you want me to send you my rate sheet, just let me know. I see that your email address is such and such. Um, So don't say what's your email because it'll say it on there. So I just confirm, is this the right email for you? All righty. Uh, Denny Hankla asks, does LinkedIn make suggestions who you should network with like Facebook or does it, it does do requests only from actual people who want to network with you? No, uh, LinkedIn does have suggestions and it's fun to go through there and see who's there. Um, I, I connect with lots of people that LinkedIn suggests because typically they're going to be a connection of someone you're already connected with. So that again, is common ground. You can say, oh, I see we have so many mutual connections. So I talked about common ground earlier, and and that's a good way to build that. So yeah, check out those LinkedIn suggestions. And there's also features where if you're just getting started on LinkedIn, you maybe even haven't created a profile. But even if you have, LinkedIn will say, do you want to go into, can we go into your address book and add people from your address book? So if you're just starting your network, that's a great way to do it too. Awesome. We got two more questions, both from JV Martin, who's a friend of ours here in LA. And great voice actor. Um, if you live in the same town as a video producer, as you're likely to do so here in Los Angeles, um, and you're courting them on LinkedIn, is it ever appropriate to ask them out on a date? No, that's not true. It says, is it ever appropriate to suggest meeting in person, kind of like a date, for coffee or lunch? When, when do you cross that line? You know, I'm just trying to think how much of our world and how much of our business happens online. If we want to get, if we want to give someone our rates and if we want to give someone our demos, it's kind of hard to do that in person unless you print off your rate sheet and bring it. Or if you put your demos on a 
cassette tape, CD, <laughs> uh, flash drive, whatever. But um, I, I think that in-person networking definitely has its value too. Um, I would not suggest to meet in person right off the bat because that's asking for someone's time and time is valuable, especially with LA traffic, right? So <laughs> I wouldn't ask for that right away. Um, as far, I mean, just follow any social rule that you can think about as far as think about if it's a dating situation and you're getting to know somebody, um, you have to go out on a first date. But for us on LinkedIn, the first date is just exchanging messages. Um, I think you just have to play it by ear and see what they're wanting. But I think there's definitely value in meeting in person. It, I think it really depends on the situation. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Uh, we got one here from uh, Michael Tanner. He says, I'm a part-time VO. My LinkedIn profile has stuff about my day job and VO. And VO. Do I need to change my profile to only include the voiceover stuff if I'm prospecting there? Sounds pretty logical to me that you probably should. That's a great question, Michael. And I've been asked that before. Um, I would say, think about what is your purpose in using LinkedIn? Are you going to use LinkedIn for your day job? I don't know what your day job is. Um, if it's completely non-related to VO, then it, then you probably, it, it won't serve any purpose for you to have that information. Um, I tell people that you just kind of want to think about who you're trying to reach. If your audience is interested in knowing about your day job, then that's cool. Or, um, but if it, it really has nothing to do with voiceover and you would rather just make yourself like be, if your brand on LinkedIn is I'm a voice actor, then own that, be a voice actor and don't be, I don't know what you do. If, if, if I, I couldn't, if you sell cars, um, that's, they don't care about that because the producer is not going to hire you based on the fact that you know how to sell cars. Absolutely. So, uh, well, Tracy, thanks for being with us tonight. If somebody wants to get in touch with you or they want to take this course, because cripes, this is valuable stuff. How can they do so? Well, I talked about the course is found at the LinkedIn edge.com and it'll have some information about it, but I'm always accessible too. my website is Tracy And it has a, <laughs> yeah, I know, right. <laughs> that one was available and my name does not have an E. My first name does not have an E, but my last name does have an E. So people are constantly confused by that, but it's T R A C Y. And then Lindley is L-I-N-D-L-E-Y, -L -E just like you see on my um, little. Your lower corner. third, as we call the it. The lower third. Thank you. <laughs> so that's how you spell my name. And it's TracyLindley.com. And you can, it's, and my email is equally easy. It's Tracy at TracyLindley.com. It's so easy to communicate with people these days. Tracy, always a pleasure to be around you and looking forward to seeing you in Atlanta. And thanks so much for being on our show tonight. Thank you, guys. I'm really excited about Atlanta, too. All right. We'll see you guys there. We'll see you there. All righty. Well, now we just get to wrap things up. Yeah, we got a few little things to hang on to the end of the show here. So we'll we hang them on. Yeah, there's a place here. There's a hangar here somewhere. <laughs> Jack's. Oh, yeah. We'll put it yeah. right on that one. We'll be right back. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back. Yes, we are. On Voice Over Body Shop. Um, 
apparently I yeah. referred to Sandy tonight as a, as a, as a, she, my apologies. Sandy is a he. So apologies to you, Sandy. Yes. Um, I was early in the show. Uh, Efren Gonzalez says, uh, we should take a hit from Joe Cipriano and consider that the time is right to transition from ISDN to other options like Source Connect and IPDTL. Oh, it's a question. Yes. Should, should we, we take a hint from Joe Cipriano? Um, has the industry finally reached the point at which we can say the ISDN boxes are finally not a complete necessity to work with big name agencies and studios? Um, I don't know. There are still <laughs> studios who Great insist answer. on using ISDN. Yep. They are still hanging on to this arcane technology. It is to them the rock on which they hang their production because they just find it to be still to this day, the easiest to the use for them and the most reliable. So that's why companies like source elements have a way to connect an ISDN box to your, I, your internet connection. So you have an actual hardware box plugged into an adapter, a really fancy adapter that then connects that to your network. And so there are people using ISDN today um, and are going to be using it for the foreseeable future, thanks to stuff like VISDN. Um, it really depends on your clients. Don't do what Joe does. Don't do what anybody else does. Do what you need to do to connect to your clients. That's, that is all that matters, right. really. Yeah. And a lot of them are starting, I'm starting to see a lot of them are actually requesting Source Connect, which is, which, which is really great to see. Yeah. Uh, we also had another question from Rhonda Phillips. She says, how important is it to get your demo turned into a video? Interesting I don't know. question. Well, I mean, we, we had busy demos with us uh, a couple months ago and we did. they, they do that kind of stuff. Have uh, you seen any trends? No, we're, we're waiting to see. I mean, I'm, I think it's important to have video on your website showing how you sound when you're doing video mm -hmm. and how your voice melds so perfectly with video. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, again, I don't it have depends. Answer. It's, we, we really, we're, it's, we'll watch the market trends and we'll report back. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? Yeah. All righty. Well, uh, next week on this very show, this guy who everybody watches, we've got to find out more about him. Oh, you know what? Tracy is sitting there quietly listening and she's, she chimed in on the chat saying it's great for your LinkedIn profile. Ah, so that, that was, more you know, video. I was thinking that I was like, go ahead. Are you still, you're still on mic, Tracy. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, that, I think that I was just kind of thinking out of the back of my head. Well, I wonder if actually it'd be a good place to have one of those on LinkedIn. I do. Have a, a video demo, a video demo. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. All definitely. Right. Thanks. Bonus. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Robbie, next week. That's a good question. All right. <laughs> uh, on March 5th, next Monday night, the one and only Mike Del Gaudio, the booth junkie. And that really is his name. Mike Del Gaudio. <laughs> Ought to be interesting to have a, a conversation. We'll learn more about him. I mean, we see all his videos and stuff, but mm -hmm. let's see the man behind the camera. He is a Reaper or, aficionado, and apparently people love his Reaper tutorials. All righty. Uh, then on March 12th, Carlos Alas Rocky will be Yay! here. That's going to be exciting. And uh, I'm going to be here for that one, too. Thank uh, goodness. I'll be out of town for the 5th. I will be... Uh, in Colorado, but I'll be back for Carlos. So I'm really excited about All that. Right. Then on March 19th, the one and only Dan O'Day, who's going to talk to us about his master class in audiobooks. And March 26th, Dr. Rena Gupta. Mm -hmm. If you were at the voice conferences, wonderful ear, nose, and throat specialist who really mm -hmm. specializes in voice actors and uh, vocal performers. That ought to be interesting. Every time we have somebody on talking about their voice, Everybody is like, they just tune your right in. Your instrument, your money maker. Yes. We'll be off on April 2nd. And then on April 9th, Tim Friedlander, who we were talking about earlier this evening, will be joining us. Great. That's who great. are our donors of the week? And oh we my greatly appreciate Gosh, them. I almost forgot to look up the donations. Sorry, you guys. Um, I'm seeing donations here from one or two new names. Or maybe I've seen this one before. Jorge Infante. I Jorge. That's the right way to say your name, my friend. It is. Uh, Andrew Kaufman. Eric Aragoni, um, Tracy H. Reynolds, who I happen to know also is, is a man, uh, not a woman. Cause Good you know, job. you gotta get those names straight when you're seeing these, uh, some of these names. Um, I just lost my donations list. Here we go. Um, 
those are the ones that are new since last week. So thank cool. you so much, all of you who donate to the show. You can you can just donate a little bit here and there. If you have a guest on that you found really helpful, you can make a donation or just subscribe a little bit, a buck a month if you want. We really appreciate it. It helps a lot. All righty. Well, again, if you want to get a hold of George or I, you talk to George, you go to georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech if you like those really short geeky URLs. <laughs> yeah, and you can contact me at homevoiceoverstudio.com. I got a contact form there. It makes it real easy mm-hmm. to get a hold of me. Mm-hmm. You're doing a podcast now, a, a, an audio geek podcast? Tell yeah, us about this it. This is a, a pure podcast. Not a webcast, not a video cast, just a podcast. Um, I got approached by a fellow named uh, Andrew Peters. He's an Australian voice talent. And he had me on a show a couple times, and we thought, you know what? Maybe it'd be fun to do a show together. Um, and he invited me into the fold along with Robert Marshall from Source Elements. Mm-hmm. And then a friend of his, I believe, uh, Andrew is in uh, Melbourne. And his, the other co-host, uh, Darren, is in Sydney. So we cover Australia pretty well. Wow. And but it's we going to be geeky. It's pretty geeky. I mean, yeah. last week's episode, we I mentioned that Neumann coming out with the U67, and it basically became a history of microphones. Robert <laughs> is incredibly knowledgeable about that kind of I'm stuff. I'm sure he is. He went on and on. I mean, it is quite, we, we really go down the rabbit hole. But there are also interviews with talent and things like that as well. So. Right. Check it out. Uh, I think we're going to be recording an episode at VO, uh, VO Atlanta as too. Cool. The show in their, in their little booth that they're going to have. I'll get to hang out and see that. Yeah. Uh, the show logs. Now we see where the show logs are actually created. Uh, here in... Uh, <laughs> I just realized I didn't see the name of the dang podcast. Oh, what's the name of the podcast? <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> it's called the Pro Audio Suite. Pro Audio Suite. The Pro Audio Suite. Good to know. Good to know. So, All right. But, anyway... This is Jack's closet. This is where he watches the show. This is where he takes all the show notes. So now you know. The mystery has been lifted. The show notes are great. They help you watch the show if you're watching on YouTube and gives you all the time codes as to what was said and when. That's right. And Tracy hits such great stuff tonight, so maybe people will go, what did you say about this? It'll be right there. Mm-hmm. You can't beat that. Uh, we, house, we also have a podcast of our show. That's right. This show is, is a long format show. A lot of long you like to listen format. to it. So if you're a listener to the show and you want to tune in to see who our guests are actually, what they look like, and you want to be in the chat room and make it more interactive, be here with us live, you can do that. Um, we're on live Monday nights at 6 p.m. And if you're someone that watches and would rather listen, just grab our podcast at Stitcher and iTunes. Basically, any place that plays a podcast, any tool, any app, you can type in VOBS. You should be able to find us. All righty. Uh, hey, show us your booths. You could be on the show, too, like Jack's Closet, <laughs> which is a, actually a very good-sounding studio. But, you know, doesn't this look great? We're, like, in all these different studios. I love this. I love that we get to be in a closet. I, I mean, know. the big, cool-looking studios are fun, but just being in someone's closet is really cracks yeah, me up. Because that's where most of these it's people real. are doing that It's stuff. where people are working, and it's where we're working a lot, going into these the closets. People's closets, yeah. absolutely. Uh, hey, you want to be in our studio and uh, join us here live as we, we yeah, party on, time. on, uh, on Monday night? It's our monthly or our weekly Monday night party. Not mm-hmm. too many parties going on on Monday night, but there's one here. So, uh, yeah, there we go. You can see the people actually here. And there goes Ari, our dog, and, and stuff. <laughs> and there's Hat. And, okay, so, um, yeah, you can just write to us if you're going to be here in the greater Los Angeles area. Monday night, uh, about quarter to six, you can be here. Just write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV, and we'll get you, we'll let you know if you can come. Mm-hmm. Depends on who you are, I guess. You know, don't want any financial analysts coming in because they want to see this show. We want voiceover people. Right. Uh, need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Voiceover Extra. Source Elements. Vo to go go. Voiceactorwebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos for providing an uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth. And it was uninterrupted tonight. This was it, pretty smooth. You know, yes. I mean, Sue can just get right out of here as soon as we're done here. That's the way we like it. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Also, I uh, need to thank Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage. Our producer, our producer Catherine Curridan, who's got us a fantastic schedule of guests. Thank this you. is going to be great. 
Uh, also, Jack Daniel on our chat room duty, and mm -hmm. of course, our floor producer, technical director, and all around nice person, Sue Merlino, who has been doing a great job mm -hmm. getting our show out to you with all these different shots and videos and all those other she things. She takes what we throw at her at the last second. That's true. That's true. Uh, and of course, Jack DeGolia for the show notes and for sending us his closet and Lee the, Penny. for being Lee Penny. All righty. You know, right after the show, what we're going to show happen? a video. Jacob has a new cartoon. Oh yeah. We haven't seen one in a while. We haven't seen, we're he stopped it. doing Mugman and he, yeah. and he did Plancy's world for yeah. a while and he'll probably still do those, Yeah, but he's got a new one. Oh, cool. It's takes place at the bottom of a pond. So anyway, stay tuned for that right after we, uh, we sign off here. So that's going to do it for us. You know, this is a tough business. Voiceover is not easy. It's not just reading. You got to know an awful lot. We're here to help you be with us every Monday night, and we'll try and teach you as much as we can. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Have a great week, everybody. to refill this can. If only it weren't so dry down here. Oh, hello. I don't think I've seen you before. Can I help you? That's a mighty fine looking garden you got there. Oh, why thank you. It's been a challenge to maintain, but I'm happy with how it's turning I'm out. I'm gonna eat it. What? Gonna eat it. Uh, sir, I wasn't planting those to be eaten. That was pretty good. Could have used some ranch dressing, though. I'll be back for more. Back to square one. That's more like it. Uh, again? Ah, time for seconds. Don't mind if I do. I excuse me, sir. I'll have to ask you to not eat my... Plants. You forgot the ranch dressing again? Do I have to bring it myself? Gee, talk about lousy service around here. Did that guy just eat your whole garden? He did it twice. And you just let that happen. Well, I, I asked him to stop, but he didn't listen. You're too soft, Pike. You gotta toughen up. Stand up for yourself and tell him you really mean no. Hmm, I could try that. Thanks, Frilligan. No problem. Show that pumpkin who's boss. I'm back, and I got me some ranch this time. Hey! Listen here, you little jerk o' lantern! Don't you lay a gosh darn finger on my garden! You don't scare me. Hey, put me down! What are you doing? Hey! Ouch! Come and get it! Well, this sure ain't good. Don't forget the ranch! That's my ranch! Was that good, Frill? You could have taken it a step back a little. Do you hear something? Oh no! Where do you come from? Got any ranch? <laughs>